This is episode 135 of the XY podcast with Cara Brett. Okay, so what if we told you Cara Brett, the financial advisor and wealth coach who heads up Bounce Financial, attracted 30 new social media followers, received 10 inquiries, and turned six of those 10 inquiries into new clients, and all from one Instagram post. Yep, she did. Now, hearing that, does it motivate you to rethink your social media strategy or think about how you're delivering your message across different social platforms? Because when it comes to social, there's definitely no one-size-fits-all approach. What works on Instagram may not necessarily work on Facebook, and what's working on your website and blog probably isn't going to have the same effect on your Twitter account. So how do you navigate this minefield and where on social is your ideal audience hanging out? Now, Kara insists she's no social media guru or influencer, but she is consistent and authentic when she posts. She uses her social platforms to build trust with her audience long before ever having any initial conversation with them. This is an awesome episode with Kara sharing what she's been doing in the client acquisition space how she's using Instagram like a blog, why she feels optimistic about the future of advice, and what it's like running an innovative business with her husband. Now, have you been keeping up to date on our socials? XY Plus, our first ever paid member platform is coming. To learn more about what it means to be part of XY Plus and to register as a founding member, head on over to xyadvisor.com slash foundation membership. Again, that's xyadvisor.com slash foundation membership. As you scale your advice business, are you frustrated with the amount of compliance, paperwork, and staffing issues? Virtual Business Partners specializes in helping financial services firms in four areas, admin, power planning, bookkeeping, and marketing. Virtual Business Partners work with you to get your business offshore ready. This includes identifying what tasks need to be done locally and what functions can be managed offshore. Advisors find they can reduce back office costs by between 50 and 75% and significantly improve their task turnaround times. For more information, go to virtualbusinesspartners.com.au. Miss Cara Brett. Hello. How good is this to have you on the podcast? Yeah, I'm excited. It's cool. Yeah, I've been listening to you since the start. You're still listening? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm flattered. I'm a huge podcast person, so listening to industry. Are you saying stories. that you just listen to anything? So like, No, I am that's... particular. I do have particular ones. I've got three genres that I'm interested in. Okay. What are they? Financial planning, okay. obviously. Mm-hmm. CrossFit. Yes. <laughs> and like nutrition and exercise science. Nice. Obviously, those three go together. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I think they do. I'm, I'm, I'll be actually, I've got a few questions, I reckon. I want to hear how you're sort of starting to weave that stuff into your <laughs> business because I know you like to bring it in. Mm-hmm. But the, um, so the financial planning stuff, is it, mm-hmm. um, so you're, you're finding, I, I, I get in two minds around the podcast. Like, we used to really be about going, let's, let's make sure we get every drip of value of like tips and tricks and stuff mm. that we can get out of someone. And then it's sort of, we've gone back to the whole like unstructured, let's, let's have a chat, chat the car, see what she's up to, what's going on. Yeah. I, I generally like general conversations cause then you get the authenticity out of it. So mm. Mm. we were just talking about, um, more scripted sort of, uh, activity. It's a bit constraining, isn't it? Sort of. Yeah. Yes. I have done scripted podcasts and it's really weird. Yeah. So, yes. Well, I will try not to swear today and we'll... No, no, we actually encourage that. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. It's, um, we should probably um, put PG on the, on the podcast, but somewhere in the disclaimer, I'm sure it's covered. Cool. No problems. <laughs> so, you're, um, you've been... You're just saying you're pretty busy. You've got a, you got a yeah. holiday coming up. Where, where are you heading to? Bali. Nice. So, yeah, we're going to Bali on Saturday and I was just saying that... If you want new business, book a holiday because honestly, we've had so much inflow in the last couple of weeks. So it's really just trying to get it all sorted. Make sure Jenny, who is our offsider, is just taking care of stuff for us while we're away. Mm. Hopefully, we don't have to log on too much, but a little bit. Yeah. Is it sort of, do you like to like disconnect? Is that sort of your. Um, I'm going to say yes and no. I will check to make sure everything's okay because I like genuinely just love my clients and want to make sure nothing bad's going on um but you know i'll check in 
then I'll do the rest of the day, do whatever it is I want to do. Mainly eat food and relax by a pool is the general plan that I have for so it. So is, yeah. is this an all-inclusive adventure? No, no, just one of those, um, what are they, the villas? Yeah, Yeah, nice. private villa. So, nice. yeah. Yeah. Not necessarily as much sightseeing, more... Chilling. Chilling, Yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, it's a good thing the the internet's pretty good over there. So uh, yeah, great Wi Fi. So <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of part of my requirement these days is make sure I have Wi Fi. Make sure the business is mm-hmm. not dying. Yep. Yes, especially because the other advisor happens to be my husband. So <laughs> yes, it does make it tricky. <laughs> there is nobody looking after it when I'm away. That's a lovely segue into a space mm. I wanted to go um, mm. on what it's like, um, not just working with your husband, like, but running the business with yeah. your husband. How's, how's that been? A lot of people ask us or ask me and it's like amazing. Yeah. I love it. We, most people don't really realize this, but it was a very strategic choice to start the business for us. And whilst I started it and I grew it, we did it as a team. So it was always the plan to bring him on. It's just that I was the one with the skill set to grow the business and yeah, start it. Okay. So it's amazing. Yeah. So so um, Ben, he his background was lawyer. Lawyer. Okay. Financial services lawyer. Well, with the way advice is these days, it's it's probably a better preparation than, um, than yeah. going through a finance degree. It's really handy to have an in-house <laughs> lawyer, I can tell you that, yeah. All right, um, those disagreements with the compliance department? Or no, right? never, never. <laughs> um, but more, you know, think about, he's done things like um, write insurance policies. Oh, wow. He comes from an insurance background in litigation. So when it comes to insurance claims and if they're ever mm. contested, all right, Ben. <laughs> this is yours. <laughs> uh, let's bring in the legal speak and give him a bit of a scare. I mean, yeah. we've never really had too many issues, but mm. it's good to have someone on your side. It makes a big difference. I imagine there have been other advisors who have had to run claims through solicitors, maybe. Well, there's a, there's a couple of guys I've come into contact over time where they're specialists for financial advisors. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I've had good chats with them. Just more, I was trying to get them to do a course for <laughs> XY Advisor because yeah, right. I think it's really useful. Um, but from under- my understanding there is it, it is really like you can get such different outcomes yeah. by understanding more of the sort of how to navigate yeah. what they, and what, what, what sort of to take literally and what to, what to really go, well, that doesn't matter. Like mm. that's, that's outside of your code sort of thing, even though you've got the wording yeah. there. And, you know, like I've been with a lawyer now for 10 years, so I've definitely got ingrained into it the things that you need to be thinking about and doing. Obviously, I'm not a lawyer. Ben does take over this sort of stuff. But the way they see the world or legally it sees the world and the way we see the world are slightly different. And mm. so having that like having that oversight from him as well as obviously the advice piece from me I think is a really good combo um, on that side of it. But also, like, just general business side. We've, running we have business. Different, yeah, like. we have different strengths. It's really good, you know, contract-wise. All right, Ben, here you go. <laughs> Do yep. that. Um, and, you know, like I said, I was responsible for building the business for the first four and a half, five years. Um, so, like, from a relationship standpoint and I suppose the process, the initial processes and stuff, that was all me. Mm. Um, he's come in and clean shop a little bit which is nice yeah so, sort of yeah. Is, yeah, if you bring in you're, you're on the sales front you're gonna you gotta be with the people <laughs> everything else can sort of get taken care of and obviously yeah Ben's uh jumping yeah. in there how's what's going on with the education side of thing because obviously mm. he's a bit has he done has that been a plan as part of it has he done the education or is it he's got to condense a bit more now and mm. get a lot of stuff done what's the uh okay so strategically again surprisingly we did things strategically um He's Sensing a theme here, Karen. Yeah. I'm a planner. Weird, hey. <laughs> um, so he did – he's got his law degree, obviously, um, which we're having some conversations right now with the bodies that are important that tell us what we can and can't do. But when he was working for um, his last employer, he went through and did the Diploma of Financial Planning. So mm-hmm. from that perspective, and obviously he became on an AR before the end of last year, so he has his AR now. It's just, a, it's just a discussion whether he needs to get um, a few more subjects and obviously the ethics and the, let's see, the exam we all have to do or whether he needs to do potentially up to six more subjects. So we'll see. Yeah, so it's sort of in the um, it's review a, stage. It's in the review stage. It's grey because I think with um, the Tax Practitioners Board, it's a yes, but it depends on how Fazia says yeah. it. So, yeah, so again... 
his legal abilities are coming into play here and he yeah, is yeah, yeah. Uh, putting forward his case, obviously, to do as little study as he needs to that doesn't overlap because he's done things like commercial law and stuff and that's part of the qualifications that they're requiring. So um, hopefully we're okay. I'm okay because I have the degree that relates. Yep. So... Again. So what's what's your your next steps education wise? Um, it's just going to be the ethics and the exam. Okay, that cool. I need to do. So whenever that happens, whenever that all, when's the first exams? I don't even know. Mm. Have they started? It's coming up. <laughs> July is it the first exams? I think so. I remember something about July where they're kicking off. All right. So yeah, the exam. I've got to do that. Ah, piece piece of cake. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Hopefully they're not running on like um, the whole bell curve um, concept of like, mm. oh yeah, like doesn't matter how easy or hard it is, like this segment of people have to fail. That would be really shit. That's no, that is no bueno, but. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd be fine. <laughs> but Maybe. I just don't think it. Well, depends we don't want to end up are. like what the, um, the CA and the, like the CPA, how oh, it's yeah. just like a money spinner for the sake yeah, of it. But sure. I suppose the good thing is, is the way that it is a bit of a, it's a government sort of channel that mm. hopefully that mitigates i don't like i think i've talked about this i don't necessarily want to be the first group to go through the exam <laughs> because if all of a sudden a whole heap of people go through and fail mm. they're going to have to re-look at it right yeah. so i don't want to be the first but i certainly don't want to be the last because if you fail <laughs> you want another go at it right mm. you want to have a chance so um i will let a few people pave the way for me see what they do mm. and then Maybe go in second or third. We'll see. Yeah, I wonder how that's going to work if everyone's thinking the same thing. Like, <laughs> no one enrolls for the Like, I've seen a few posts. People are keen to get it done straight okay. away. So, and I'm assuming some of the bodies will put out study material that you can buy. I yeah, think. I've seen the stuff out there already. Like, the FBA, I know, is putting stuff out. I'm sure the FA is doing similar. We'll be fine. I'll be fine. Yeah. Well, as long as it, like, yeah, the only thing that's really going to mess people up if they start to cover stuff that is out of the realms of what advisors do (laughs) now and you think about what advisors do now versus maybe what they did 15 20 years ago Mm. it's a completely different world Mm. um so yeah again we'll have to see what that looks like yeah well it's um Mm. i I, I do not doubt that um the xy advisor facebook group will let you know what's going on and we'll be be first to hear (laughs) how the exam went um, but yeah, no, that's cool. So the strategy obviously is starting to pay off. Um, you've got mm-hmm. you've got an extra person there in the team. Mm-hmm. So all those leads that you've got coming in with all your activity, and, and yeah. it would be great to talk about some of the things that you. Because I remember last time we chatted was we had you it was a was it last year or the year before our first X Y event in Brisbane? I yeah, think it was. about cash flow. Yep. Yeah, mm. we're focused on cash flow, but mm. like you you'd started doing your seminars and yeah. events, and yeah. I'm presuming you've continued doing that. Since. Yeah, um, yeah, we definitely for the last few years have definitely done. Uh, we call it money night. Um, obviously, very creative, but it was more sort of based on that practical budgeting side of things, which. You know, from my perspective and the clients that I deal with, they sort of say, yes, do super insurance investments. That's cool. But actually what I want to know about is how to manage my money. Um, and so when you listen to your target audience as to what they want and you start putting out the content and, you know, the events and stuff, um, we ran a whole heap of those over the last two years, sold out every single time. Always got clients from it as well. Um, good PR, you know, all the bits and pieces. So um, from that perspective, we did a lot of that. I haven't done any this year, um, but to be honest, we have had so much new inflow that mm. it hasn't ne- necessarily been required at this point in time. Where are the, like you said, there's a lot of people on yeah. plate at the moment. What's, yeah. where are they coming from? Um, two main places. One is my current clients. So yeah everyone sort of has that and if you have good clients that are happy then happy days um and i would say probably the next biggest one is instagram Damn. yeah so social media but instagram is, is this the business one or just the personal one just, business one <laughs> <laughs> don't think i've had any through my personal no business one okay cool. yeah. and so, what sort of uh what sort of things are you i guess what because obviously now it's not just you it's um uh, it's been are you adjusting mm. that image because I remember when mm. like it was a very female oriented um, image that you had previously that you kind of like I mean I, there was probably a feminine slant I would say but I specifically 
you know, there was a few strategic plays on this. One was not making it my name. You know, I didn't want it to be Brett Financial or anything um, for a number of reasons. Uh, so we had its own brand on itself. And, yes, that it probably lends itself to be a bit feminine, but not too feminine that it tends to scare guys away. So you're maintaining that, that sort of leaning, branding leaning towards uh, the female market? I think it probably slightly leans towards it, but I think because our target audience is, you know, couples and professional couples, yep. um, a lot of the time the woman is the one who will reach out to me first. The the man will engage 100%, but, um, you know, maybe some of the wording and the imagery tends to push more towards that side we do like we do include guys ben's on there as well like it is both of us and we mm. do try and show all facets of it yep. um so that's been intentional as well but um what sort of things are we talking about with the instagram and what's been yeah, working like, yeah. what do you what do you feel has been present um we we essentially use instagram as, as a bit of a blog now mm-hmm. these days so the the static page and i'll talk about instagram stories because i think that's completely different but the static page is almost like a blog. And I think about the topics I'm talking about with clients at any point in time. So what did I put on this week? So maybe something about managing maternity leave. Okay. Um, there's an image that might relate to that. And I'll do three or four paragraphs in there. Not too long, but enough that people are getting some value and some content out of it. And it's basically saying, you know, these are the things that you need to consider in this area because this, is, this relates to you for this reason. Um, and so that's kind of happening, you know, most days there's something relating to my target audience Mm -hmm. and you can recycle that stuff. You just write it differently. Like it all, it's all relative. Um, and then Instagram stories is a bit more raw, um, as I suppose for everybody it is, but it's more, if I'm on the go and I have just had a chat with someone about something and I'll be like, Oh, just talked about this. Here's this thing. Um, awesome. You know, let us know if you've got any questions about it. Yeah, cool. And so like a client conversation and just Yeah, going, it could be a client conversation. And you're like, that was obviously what I just said was really valuable. Let's yeah. talk about what, what the situation was and then yeah. what we did to... So we do stuff like that. Um, we'll also just, you know, post fun things. So, you know, like we like to celebrate client wins and things too, right? Without outright naming them because not everybody necessarily wants to be named on social media um but you know like if if something awesome happens or you know um uh, one you know one of my clients is a professional athlete and they won um the basketball <laughs> i'm obviously not a basketball fan you know so it's like awesome like celebrate them say hey good good job like you know put a shout out to them um small business owners that we have as clients you know we'll we'll sort share of their partnership stuff. sort of thing yeah. yeah and just i think it for us, it helps us to display our personality. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, from our perspective, the financial planning game is more of a relationship game now than it is the technical side, mm-hmm. um, from an outside perspective anyway, it allows them to understand the type of people we are. So by the time they contact us, they already are pretty keen to engage with us because they know if they like us or not. That is... I wish I had you in that last podcast. I <laughs> so I was actually chatting to Nick, a video specialist, and that podcast will be out. Um, but uh, we were actually talking about that exact thing. I was like, mm. so have you seen people do it as like a, a journey as part of the, the validation journey? Because like it's you. It's almost what it's doing is self allowing people to self-select because mm-hmm. people get worried about, oh, how are they going to look? How am mm-hmm. I going to feel? But like, that's who you are when they get there. So exactly. if they don't like, it's a way to get rid of people that aren't going to resonate it's, with you when they get in. It's amazing. Is so that like, how you feel? hundred percent. So at one point, um, you know, one of my, my clients who has a small business, she did a shout out. Like I didn't ever ask her to, she just goes, here's my amazing financial advisor. She's awesome. Right. So awesome. Great. From that, we ended up getting, you know, let's say 30, 40 new followers. Now for a financial planning firm, that's pretty big. Like, no, when, when I, a funny no that's right. It's boring. <laughs> um, so, but then from that, I got 10 inquiries, Damn. like, you know, direct messages via Instagram. And from that, like six of them converted to clients. Wow. So it's like the power of, I suppose, one, being able to show your personality, but that whole, and I know it sounds a bit wanky, but the, the Instagram influencer, mm. I didn't engage her as an Instagram influencer. She's just one of my clients. I did a good job mm. for her and she was happy. So she told the people who follow her. She has a big following. Mm. It just so happened to 
transpire that because of that I got clients. That's fantastic. And so if you're like for me, it's just it's just continuing to be consistent on there to show your personality. Mm. Um, and that's that social bit that you're talking about there as well. Mm. When you're interacting, so instead of it just being this conduit of what you, you're delivering from a content, it's that mm. interaction with other parties yeah. which generates yeah. more activity. Yeah, and there's other things you can do. Like I've done this as well. Let's say you've got a referral partner or even just someone in business um, and they've got something that's really interesting. Just have a chat to them on your Instagram stories about it. You know, like if people aren't interested, they'll tap by. Mm. Who cares? It's there for 24 hours. doesn't need to be polished. Yeah. Um, but exactly like you said before, by the time someone's reached out to me, they've already decided if they like me or not. You've got enough content out there about yeah. you. That- yeah. And it's authentic and genuine. Mm. Um, it's not, I mean, it's not scripted. So... And like I said, as long as I try not to swear too much, it tends to be okay. Hey, I'm sure that's part of the lure for some people. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. Is it, um, I guess, so you've got Instagram. Have you have you got any other like channels that you focus on or what do you? Um, there is Facebook. Yep. So um, we, we essentially almost replicate what's on Instagram to on Facebook as well from the static posts. Mm-hmm. We don't do the stories on there. Okay. Um, and I still feel like that's beneficial because yeah. um, we're sort of in this demographic where we're Gen, Gen Y, Gen X, which is, you know, like a, probably a lot of people and you'll get some of that demographic, the older ones more so on Facebook and the younger ones more so on Instagram. Mm. And so it does sort of capture both of those audiences, which is um, pretty good. Uh, and the other thing is that with Facebook, you tend to, they'll follow us on Instagram, but they'll also follow us on Facebook as well. So if someone's followed us, on one of those platforms, there's usually a bit of a. I, I tend to find maybe a, a three to six month lead time. You can okay. you can almost wow. You can almost go okay. This this person and their partner has followed us. Um, if you're consistent with content, which we have been from day dot, mm. um, usually within that three to six months, they will reach out if they like what they see. Yeah, wow. Yeah, we've definitely had that on many instances. That's so, cool. Yeah. So you, I think what you seem to be alluding to is how you track what's mm. going on and it, how deep do you go into the tracking and the conversions and all that sort of thing um not not super crazy yeah. because to be honest um i guess one of the biggest gripes people have had about social media is they're like oh it doesn't it doesn't work mm. and i argue on that because um maybe they're not coming through a social media channel maybe they've found you via social media they've looked at you a different way they come to your website you know like mm. i always ask where people have have found me and you know they might have someone might have mentioned me on facebook you know in a in a group somewhere yeah um how would you know that if you didn't capture it so i don't particularly care it's not like and like i said we're a financial planning firm we don't have heaps of likes we don't have load loads of followers mm. But it seems to be that even with that, the ones who are are engaged enough to want to contact us, I suppose. Yep. So, yeah, metrics, don't really care. Don't boost posts, don't pay for anything. So cool. I, maybe I'll have to one day. I don't know. Ah, Technology doesn't sound like and, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. <laughs> anything, it sounds like it's just getting better and better. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what do you do with, um, what do you get Brett to do? I'm ben. sorry, Ben. Ben. Mm. What do you get him to do on the social media? What's uh... um, he he gets into the stories? He can do his own stories and stuff. I yeah. tend to put the content on, yeah. like the static content. Do you he, guys do stuff where you're both there? Yeah, we've done both stuff. Yeah, um, you know, it, it, it's it's very much a don't overthink it. Just do it. Yeah, mm. um, and if it's relevant and it's not offensive, like you know, we never want to be the offensive type of people who are. We take a stand on the things we believe in, but we're also not going to go out and bash you know, this person or this bank oh, or whatever. Oh, give me some it's not. <laughs> <laughs> What's um, your stance on the election? <laughs> you know, we, we still have a, a general positive persona. Yeah. We are positive people, but we want to make sure that that's the part that's coming through. Well, there's a balance between, I guess, sharing your values and um, through how you're expressing yourself and, mm. like, actually going, telling people, like, really forcing it down people's throats. Yeah, that's not our game. So, um, yeah, it's... For us, it needs to be genuine and just, hey, we're here to share information. Hmm. Hopefully it's helpful. You you want to be adding good vibes to the the social media community, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I love the the example of, um, what was it, one one shout out from a happy client, 10 reach outs off the back of it, six clients. Like, 
if anyone's unsure about the value of social media, just that one's, that one's yeah. a good one to think of. I always just think you should give it a go. Mm. And um, But I think one thing that people people's downfall can be is that consistency of mm. social media. So social media was a big play for us from day dot of the business and we've never let it slide. And that's mm. because that's where our target audience is, right? Mm. Um, and so sometimes it feels like you're putting stuff out there that's not being seen, but it's being seen. Do you know mm. what I mean? So, um, but you just need to be consistent. So you can't do it for four weeks and then go, oh, it didn't work. Mm. The four weeks is nothing. Yeah. We've been doing it for five years. Like, yeah. And we'll keep doing it. Well, that's what, um, yeah, just in the other podcast with Nick, is was talking about the, the value of just that, that familiarity that you're building with people. Mm. Like even because you think about all, all you have to do is think about how you interact with some of the posts that come through on social media. Yeah. You might just you might view it, you might watch the whole video, but like you move you've moved on, but you 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 got the impact of yeah, that without sure. actually distinctly registering as a like or yeah. yeah or and you think about Phil with all his videos, right? Mm. Everyone feels like they know who he is. Yeah, totally. They might not have met him, but they're like, oh yeah, I know Phil because he's always been on their feed and their screen. So. Um, I think it's sort of the same thing. It might not always be my face up there, but there might be, you know, this All stuff. the brands are there, bounces yeah. out there. Bounce, Great. Yeah. Bounce, yeah. Bounce. Mm. Do you have any jingles that you've got for your videos? Or? No. No. Thought I'd ask. Yeah, cool. Well, that's, oh, that's, that is awesome for that to yeah. be going well for you. The, the other thing I'm, I'm pretty keen to hear about a bit more is because, like, health is a big thing for you. Mm-hmm. And how that started to incorporate into your business. So, mm. like a lot of people are talking about how relevant, how, how simple, like everyone always goes, oh, advisors like personal trainers. And you get these analogies that go through and yeah. um, and how much, how much finance relates to health and all this sort of stuff. And there's so much overlap going on with um, the way that you deal with these behaviors, but also like... And the methodology and, and the, the coaching content and the coaching. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're right. Health is a big thing for me. I've not particularly like gone into that as a niche in terms of the clientele. I mean, in any community you're a part of, you will attract people. So, you know, like I have people coming from my gym and, and whatever. Um, and because I'm the type of person who is into health and fitness – and that comes through in either my personal social media, but even some of the business stuff, I will, you know, put it out there because it's who I am. Um, then I tend to attract a lot of people who are thinking the same things. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, yeah, I'm a financial planner, but it's going all right. What do you want to achieve out of your life, and how can I help you get there financially? Right, mm. that's the way but I see you, the world. But you definitely. You're definitely putting up those parameters around it. You're not letting it yeah. reach over into these no, other areas. No, yeah. I'm like, I want people to achieve their goals, right? So that whole goals-based advice thing, that's mm-hmm. that's my jam. Um, and most of them will have a financial impact. But if they're stoked to do their, I mean, to do their first pull-up, great. I'll be there cheering you on the whole way. Um, but, you know, like that's just because I want you to do cool things with your life. Yeah, it's support. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it more than anything, it's not like I'm advertising in there. I think just because that's the type of person I am, mm. that people are attracted to me mm. in that zone. Yeah, I, I just think that whole parameters of going, this is the space where I'm adding mm. value to. Yeah. And anything that falls out of that, um, like, I, I fully, I'll talk to you about it and support you, but, yeah, but sure. I'm not, it's not part of my service. No, no. Do you, do you bring in um, other partners and like referral partners around that space? So like nutrition, part, like any well, of that sort of we stuff? We sort of have, so we have like, I suppose, a catalogue of people, businesses that we know, like and trust, mm-hmm. right? Um, so there's the general ones like mortgage brokers, accountants, etc. But also because of how involved I suppose we are with people's transitions and goals, um, they will ask us if we know people. Mm. And because if you're in, you know, the business community in any town, so in Brisbane, I want to make sure I know a lot of people in different things. So if someone asks me, hey, um, do you have a good dietitian? I'll be like, yeah, I actually do. I worked with one and this is the person's contact details. I can recommend them. But I wouldn't necessarily be like, oh, you said one of your goals is to do this. 
here's my dietitian. It's yep. it's more of a yeah, I know yeah, people, yeah. and if you want to know this, then great, I'll talk to you about it. Yeah. Um, what do you what do you do with those those guys? Because I think this is one of the biggest challenges around where advice is getting to with like all mm. the change that's come through, and it's obviously fascia and what they're focusing on is around um, and then what ASIC focus is focusing on there's that tangibility requirement that's coming in it's sort of like some of these um sort of objectives that fall outside that clear financial scope Mm. sort of doc how do you how do you deal with it because i think a lot of like i always found that quite challenging um and i like i always looked at some of those things i'm like geez i really want it that's such that's going to add so much value Mm. to their life Mm. and supporting them on that and and looking at how I could shape my service to help with, help that, with that goal. Yeah. Like it's just, yeah, how do, how do you deal with it? Because, um, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think we come from most of the time when whenever we'd made a recommendation, there was usually a product that related to it. Hmm. And so a lot of the stuff, the work that we do, there's actually no product recommendation with that. So um, probably just to give you an outline as to where we do I think the most valuable work for our clients, which is, you know, we do super insurance investments. That's all cool. But it's the cash flow and the transitions that is the biggest area for us. So if you think about um, clients between the ages of 30 to 45, they have so many different things happening in their life and changing in that period. So they'll buy a house that changes their financial landscape. They will get married, they might get pregnant, so therefore go on maternity leave, maybe go back part-time, childcare, private schools. Their financial world is going up and down sideways, like all random things during that. And for us, we are really helping them manage that period financially, like Mm. in terms of how they physically manage their money Mm. to get to where they need to go. So that by the time they get there, they haven't run out of money or whatever it is. Mm. Now, in the background, there is product that helps with that. And mm. we use software to help track that. And so from our perspective, that's where we add the most value. Um, all of those life events have a financial impact. And so helping them to adjust the way they manage their money and their budget and all of that sort of stuff is the service that we provide in amongst the other stuff. Mm. And so I don't know, like I know that not necessarily all financial advisors do that, mm. But that's the stuff that our clients find the most value with. Um, but it's easy for us because all of those have a financial correlation. Mm. Doing a push-up doesn't. So, of course, we can't yep. go onto those sides of things. But um, So have you found that um, no matter sort of how varied the goal range, if you're really talking about what people want, you're, you're always able to find a draw a line to a financial requirement to support that or, essentially yeah. essentially you yeah. know there are other goals they want to achieve and that's cool like mm. we're here to support you would you put that do you do you document that down? not necessarily yeah no yeah no. from a relationship standpoint yes yeah. right so um if i knew someone was a you know competing in an event in june i would put it in my you know, system to bring it up so that in June I would contact them and see how they went. But that's just a relationship management thing from a SOA and the way we document things. No, it would just be around the things that have a financial impact. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I I think that's, that's, um, you're really on the money in terms of where financial advice is. It's, I, I think I'm just, uh, I'm just sharing my, my conundrum of wanting to sort of always wanting to sort of play into those spaces and go, that's a great goal. I really think that would be helpful yeah. for you. Let's do something for it. I know. I just my toolkit doesn't really support that. Um, <laughs> I know. Let's uh, let's go with. Um, would you like some insurance? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I uh, just actually told you about how I was saving for a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, of course, we're going to do insurance, but for me, I can put in place those strategies there. But if they were telling me that they wanted to run a marathon, I'm like, I can tell you some stuff, but I can't do it. You mm. know. So. Um, well, yeah. yeah what, what's an example so would you then draw it in okay well what are the costs that go into running a marathon and that sort of breaking that sort of thing down or um, I wouldn't break it down like that yep. that wouldn't be that's such a it'd more be like hey you're doing a marathon in Sydney great we need to put aside $2,000 for the weekend do you know what I mean yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's not muck around yeah, like yeah. itemising awesome. everything yeah, yeah for sure um, you know, it's more the bigger type of things, renovations, you know, like those type of things are goals for people. And mm. if you think like it is ma- like if you think about most of the goals, it is financial goal. Mm. Um, the other stuff is just the fun things in the background. But 
again, I appreciate you in that you want to help people with all this stuff. I want to help people too, but you do have to draw a line. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, it's, it's, I think it's, um, that you, you can't run a business without drawing a line. No. Yeah. Cause otherwise you end up off in different tangents and we can talk about that a bit, but um, that's more yeah. about me than you. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> and we'll talk about your feelings in a second. Yeah. Yeah. We did say we we're going to talk about feelings. How are you? How are you feeling about X Y Advisor being in Brisbane again? Excited, uh, obviously. Yeah, He's selling out. How How do you feel about this year in financial advice? I guess like mm. this, there's a lot of shit that's gone down. There's a lot. Do you are you fussed? Um, are you? Do you feel that stuff's happened that's unjust, or do you feel that this is just a process that needs to go on? Do you feel that there's you feel Can I like all the boxes? <laughs> advisors are just being grounded in between more mm. influential um, factors? Yeah. Um, probably like everybody, I've had some down days about it. Um, especially when the announcement around like the mortgage brokers and stuff hit at that point in time. I just, I almost felt like, you know, like a giant flaming ball had been hit at the person standing next to me. That's mm. almost how it felt. Yeah. on that day You're like, it might be me next yeah sort of thing, exactly yeah. um having said that a lot of what i think is happening i definitely saw coming mm. you know um i did my degree back i finished it in 2013 and that was before any talk about the degree because i just felt like it was coming at some point so i knew that education side would would catch up um the commissions thing, I mean, that just seems like a no-brainer. That's going to go at some point or be reduced at some point. That's always been there. It's, I think it's a really tough time for people, but generally how we see it is, is it's a pretty big opportunity for us. Yes, there's harder things, maybe some fees have increased and all of those kinds of things. Um, but with technology continuing to get better, I think our efficiencies can increase and that's only going to be better over time. Like I said, we still have a hell of a lot of inflows. Like people need advice now more than ever. Um, And if we can be there providing a great service for them, then awesome. And couple that with the fact that there's going to be so many advisors leaving the industry. Mm. Um, So I've definitely had, I I never used to get any advisors leaving other, or other clients leaving other advisors. It was always just new people, Mm. but I've definitely. You're expanding the pie, so to speak. I've definitely got people leaving advisors to come to me. Okay. So that's happening. And that's, whether that's because the advisor's leaving or, or they're unhappy with the service, you know, there's a variety of different reasons, but I I'm generally optimistic about the industry. We have so many unknowns. I can't exactly plan what it's going to look like, but mm. if you focus on giving your clients a great service, it can't be a bad thing, right? And we'll just have to ride the wave and see what happens. I don't want to continue any more than that because that's such a great <laughs> message, Cara. So, yeah, I, I, I love your uh, enthusiasm and obviously, um, mm. obviously you see the light. Yes, I see the light. So um, for those out there, Cara sees a lot. She's a pretty smart lady. <laughs> so um, it's not all doom and gloom. No. Well, um, is there any messages you'd like to share with anyone um, about? So Cara from Bounce Financial. Yep, that's me. That's it. <laughs> Look her up. If you want to copy what she does on social media, um, know where to find her. Yeah, you, it's open. I mean, you can see it all. <laughs> but you're not Cara, so that's... No, I like. I don't think we are in competition with each other. I never have. Like all advisors, I think that we can totally share, and I'm always sharing information with people because there's so many people out there who don't have financial advice. So, if we can all bring up the standard, we all win. On that note, thank you for coming on, Cara. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs>